Dr. Nicole Apellian. I'm an herbalist, and I've studied plants and natural remedies for the past 20 years. I got my undergraduate degree at McGill University, my master's at the University of Oregon, and my PhD at Prescott College. But I was never afraid of dirt time. I've studied plants on the savanna and have lived and worked with one of the last remaining San Bushman tribes of the Kalahari. In 2015, I was among the first women to be selected for the History Channel's TV show, Alone. I then went on to survive for 57 days straight in the wild, with little more than my knife and the plants that I found there. But what I'm probably known best for is making powerful remedies. For people with autoimmune disorders? For people who have been taking pills for years with little to no effect? For people who are tired of dealing with the countless side effects of drugs? For people who can't afford or don't want to pay hundreds of dollars to Big Pharma each month? For people who want to be prepared for a crisis when the pharmacies run dry and they're not able to refill their prescriptions? and for people who just want to live a healthier life. I've helped thousands of people treat themselves naturally after following my advice and taking my remedies. In most cases, that advice can be boiled down to just three teachings that will change your life forever and put you on the path to healing yourself. In the first lesson, you'll discover the one most important thing you should never take for granted, but you probably do. It almost killed me. As you look at me right now as I'm talking to you, you can't see it, but I have a terrible and incurable disease. When the first symptoms appeared, I didn't give them much credence. I was just 29 when I started feeling tired all the time. I would lose my balance every now and then, and I felt some tingling in my feet. Then, one day, as I was flying home to see my parents, all of a sudden, I lost my eyesight in one eye. I remember I was in my seat panicking and constantly rubbing my eye, thinking it's just something that would go away. The doctors did an MRI and said I had a clear-cut case of multiple sclerosis, a crippling autoimmune disease. They put me on medication, a lot of medication. I was injecting myself every day, but my disease was only getting worse. Soon, I couldn't go to work anymore. I was slowly losing control of my own body. My disease kept me bedbound most of the time. On good days, I could still walk using a cane. I bought a house that was wheelchair accessible. The expectations were that I would be in a wheelchair the rest of my life in the best case scenario. I was continuously in pain. It was agonizing. It often felt like I was being burned with a cigarette lighter. But the fear of having to depend on others for simple things like going to the toilet was even worse. This was supposed to be my new life, the new normal. Life changes when you get sick. Like it or not, sooner or later you will face something similar. Everything you thought was important suddenly takes a back seat. Your priorities shift, but they shift to where they should have been all along. It's ironic that our health seems more valuable only after we lose it. Without it, we have nothing. Imagine this. If you could heal yourself from a crippling disease, would you spend everything you have for a life-saving treatment? I know I would. Everything else can be rebuilt. Instead, we spend most of our time trying to make more money and almost no time preserving our health. It's only once we are in a hospital bed or sick at home that we appreciate it. But then, it will be too late. Tomorrow, your life might change completely. You don't know when your years will get stolen from you. So don't take your health for granted. Don't wait for it to deteriorate to take care of it. In my case, the life I was living became unbearable. This led me to pour all my time and my resources into the biggest medical research of my life. But the thing I found out didn't just put me on the path to recovery. It ended up saving many other sick people as well people with very different diseases that had nothing to do with multiple sclerosis. And it might well have something to do with you, the one watching this video. Because if you have ever taken prescription pills, or if you're taking some right now, you need to know one thing that I found out the hard way. 
there is a devil in your medicine cabinet. You might not realize it, but the only thing that healed you every time you got sick was your immune system. That's your inner doctor. Many people mistakenly think it's the drugs that cure them, but they're wrong. Drugs help you, but it's your inner doctor who heals you. I'll give you an example that will clarify this. When someone has HIV, their inner doctor becomes very, very weak to the point that every common cold is life-threatening. No matter how many powerful pills that person takes, when their inner doctor becomes too weak, their fate is sealed. I'm pretty sure you've also heard about accident victims being given survival chances by their physicians. 50%, 20%. That's because their treatment can only take you so far, but it's your inner doctor that ultimately decides your fate. Medicine is not math. That's only because we all have a different inner doctor. That's also the reason we all get different chances, and one of the reasons we respond differently to the same medication. Sooner or later, you will depend on your inner doctor too. But, just like I did a long time ago, you're probably hurting your inner doctor right now without even realizing it. Whenever you take a pill or another synthetic medicine, you help your body for the short term. You treat your symptoms and you feel better for the moment. But there's a huge price you pay each time. And it adds up. Many pills are slowly killing the doctor inside you. With every pill that you take, your inner doctor becomes weaker. Whenever you take these pills, he does less. He becomes habitually lazy. So when you really need him, you may find out that he's too out of shape to do anything. It's the same with every part of your body. If you don't use your muscles, they'll atrophy. If you don't use your brain, you'll think slower over time. If you don't walk, your leg bones will lose calcium and become brittle. The same thing happens to your immune system. If your doctor is on pills, he is weak, and your body will slowly but surely decline. Your immune system is also in charge of clearing away dead cells and repairing the damaged ones. If your inner doctor becomes lazy, your organs will deteriorate a lot faster. You'll age prematurely on the inside. Even worse, a damaged cell can end up mutating into a cancerous cell. As you've been watching this video, thousands of cells inside your body have mutated, but that doesn't mean you'll get cancer. That's because they need to evade your inner doctor, who is constantly on the lookout for abnormal cells. That's why a person with a weak inner doctor is more likely to develop cancer. For example, people infected with HIV are about 500 times more likely to be diagnosed with a certain type of cancer. One of the reasons cancer was very rare 150 years ago is that back then, people had a healthy inner doctor. There were no pills, so they had to have a strong immune system if they were to survive. That's also one of the reasons why autoimmune diseases were not common at all. Basically, when you have a disease like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, inflammatory bowel disease, psoriasis, multiple sclerosis, or any of the other over 100 autoimmune diseases, it's your inner doctor who's sick. But conventional medicine typically works by fighting and suppressing the immune system even more, making him sicker and sicker. That's why you'll feel better for the moment from alleviating your symptoms, but you will never heal your inner doctor who is sick in the first place. It's your inner doctor who decides how you live your life. Depending on its strength, when you turn 60, 70, or 80, you'll be bedridden with all sorts of chronic diseases, tired all the time, with different articular pains, and prematurely aged. Or you'll be full of energy and fit inside to do whatever you want, free to spend good time with your family and work the homestead or do your hobbies until your 90s, just like our grandparents who died with their boots on. We've all seen a 90-year-old that still works in the garden every day and doesn't have any joint pain or many health problems at all. My grandmother, an avid walker and gardener, could outwalk us even in her later years. On the other hand, we all know people who feel and look 70 when they are barely past 50, bedridden with all sorts of diseases or with their time cut short. This is the true cost of taking pills over a long period of time. Most of the times, one pill will lead to another. And soon you may find yourself taking a handful of pills at a time, just like I did. But just as pills harm your inner doctor, there is something that heals it and makes it stronger. Stronger than it has ever been. And you'll find out about it in lesson number three, taking charge of your inner doctor. Think about all the good things that have happened in your life, especially the most important ones. My guess is that they were all done by you. Whenever you took matters into your own hands, you did great things. Whenever we become lazy, the exact opposite happens. As the old folks used to say, 
If you want something done right, do it yourself. No matter if it's raising a child, buying a house, or doing an important task at work, when it really matters a great deal, you won't just leave it up to someone else and hope for the best. Then why would you do any differently when it comes to probably the most important thing in life, your health? If I hadn't taken matters into my own hands, I would have probably been stuck in bed having my 16 and 11 year old kids taking care of me instead of me taking care of them. Ignorance is the worst disease. It kills and cripples thousands of people daily. Investigate for yourself. Believe, but doubt. Of course, your physician means well, but he or she doesn't have the same skin in the game that you do. Nobody does. Follow his or her advice, but explore other options too. Most of the times, the recommendations will treat your symptoms, but not the root cause. Anti-inflammatory medication doesn't treat the cause of inflammation. Painkillers don't treat the cause of the pain. Insulin doesn't treat the cause of diabetes. And statins don't treat the cause of cholesterol buildup in the arteries. All these pills may have devastating side effects if taken over long periods of time, killing your own natural ability to treat the root cause. But there is something that can truly help your inner doctor. For me, it changed my life. I went from bedridden to traveling all over the world and enjoying every bit of my life while taking good care of my children and doing things that even healthy people can't do. Like surviving 57 days alone in the wilderness with little more than a knife. I manage my MS using a very specific combination of nature-provided nutrients, minerals, and most importantly, three simple tinctures that I take almost every day. These are the ones that worked for me, but I hope today I'll show you something that will work for you. That's why, right now, I want to invite you inside my world of remedies. I want to share with you everything I've discovered about medicinal plants and guide you along the path to healing yourself naturally. Because as pills weaken or even fight the only one that can heal you, your inner doctor, some natural substances found in nature, even some of your backyard plants, are making him stronger. Our ancestors used these plants long before we existed, but they lacked something that we know today. With the help of modern science, we can now distinguish the plants with powerful healing properties from the bogus folk remedies. We can now pinpoint the substances in nature that act like an antibiotic, an antiviral, or for the ones that are helping your inner doctor. That's because now we know the mechanics behind a disease. Our great-grandparents didn't even know that the root cause of an infection were tiny little creatures we now call bacteria or viruses. I was so inspired by my recovery that it became my life's mission to help others achieve their own. I edited all my manuscripts with all the plant knowledge I've gathered over the last 20 years. I sorted out only the most powerful medicinal plants, tinctures that really work, strong decoctions, infusions, salves, extracts, syrups, poultices, and place them in one book so that you can take advantage of them. It's called The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, The Power of Plant Medicine. And here's just a glimpse of what you'll find in it. With hundreds of healing plants, I knew I had to find a way for people to quickly pinpoint the one they need. So when you open your new book, you'll find not only an index with the medicinal plants, but also an index with diseases and afflictions, so you can search by your specific needs. I also included color photographs and easy-to-follow identification descriptions. There is also an easy-to-follow alphabetized appendix, so you can easily find a plant or illness. For example, this is one of the plants you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. I'm pretty sure it looks familiar because it grows in most American backyards, and most people weed it out. But what they don't know is that this plant contains a powerful milky substance called lactocarrion. While this substance doesn't contain any opiates, it has similar effects acting directly on the central nervous system to lessen the feeling of pain. Inside the book, you'll find full instructions on how to turn it into a pain-killing extract that you can use daily or whenever you are in need. I'll also show you the common U.S. driveway weed that has become the most expensive and sought-out plant in Venezuela after the pharmacies ran dry. You'll also find two plants that I've used many times. From now on, I hope you'll take advantage of their healing power too. On day 42 of the Alone Show, I accidentally cut my knuckle while gutting a fish. The wound was very deep and most likely would have gotten infected. Luckily, I found yarrow, which, besides its antibiotic properties, quickly stops bleeding by contracting the blood vessels. And, most importantly, I found usnia, the powerful antibiotic you've probably already seen growing on tree trunks. 
I dressed my wound for three days with these, and it healed so well that now you can barely see the scar anymore. On page 55, you'll find out the strange thing that happens when you pour salt into a cabbage. The end remedy offers some of the best protection possible for your digestive tract, regulating bowel movement and preventing both diarrhea and constipation. Of course, in the book, you'll also discover the three herbal tinctures I'm using to manage my MS. Because MS is an autoimmune disease, you should know that all three tinctures are effective remedies that can be used for all the other autoimmune disorders. One of the tinctures that I'm taking daily is an adaptogen. That means it decreases the biological and oxidative stress of the diseases, fights chronic inflammation, and repairs damaged tissue. Unlike Humira, methotrexate, or other medication that suppress your inner doctor, the other two tinctures have an immunomodulatory effect. That means they bring you back to balance. If your immune system is hyperactive, they downregulate it, but only until the inflammation subsides. One works by balancing the nerve growth factor, which, besides nourishing connections between neurons, has a pro or anti-inflammatory effect depending on the case. So while usually the nerve growth factor keeps the immune system on high alert, when the inner doctor is already activated, causing inflammation or tissue damage, the nerve growth factor sends a signal to calm it back down. According to a 2017 medical study published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences, nerve growth factor activates pathways necessary to dampen the inflammatory response and limit tissue damage. That's probably why nerve growth factor has been discovered in the cerebrospinal fluid of multiple sclerosis patients, in the synovial fluids of rheumatoid arthritis, in the sera of patients with lupus, and so on. It shows the body's effort to avoid excessive inflammation in that area. I could go on and on about the biology behind it, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. What matters is that they helped me and many of my patients get our lives back. And if an autoimmune disease is robbing you or a loved one of health and joy, then you have absolutely nothing to lose by trying these three tinctures. As you can probably imagine, the nerve growth factor also plays a tremendous role in helping people with neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. These three remedies will not cure these diseases. So far, nothing can. And anyone claiming otherwise is just giving desperate people false hope. But by strengthening the connections between neurons, they may add more good years for those of us afflicted by these terrible conditions. Money may not grow on trees, but many of the remedies you pay money for do. This one that you'll find on page 221 is a fast-acting treatment for irregular heartbeats with the added benefit of lowering bad cholesterol levels. You'll also discover a tree called slippery elm. The inner bark of this tree contains a substance called called mucilage. When taken orally, mucilage becomes slit and coats the mucous membranes in the intestinal tract, soothing inflammation, relieving pain, and giving your bowels a much needed rest to heal themselves. If you have any digestive issues like Crohn's disease, ulcers, gastritis, heartburn, colitis, or gastroenteritis, then you absolutely need to try it. One of the most powerful Native American ointments was made from what they called the Tree of Peace. This Haudenosaunee ointment that we almost lost to history relieves back, knee, neck, shoulder, ankle, and wrist pain caused by any form of arthritis. The active compound in this ointment is found to be pycnogenol, which inhibits the inflammatory chemical signals in our body and provides mobility to your joints. A review of three randomized, double-blind, and placebo-controlled medical studies of middle-aged patients suffering from osteoarthritis found that it reduced the pain by roughly 42%, stiffness by around 43%, and physical performance improved by an average of 44%. You'll also find out the plant that boosts your energy and relieves foot pain when you wear it inside your shoes. Another plant you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies is bone set, which can easily be turned into one of the most powerful antipyretics. This means that it drastically reduces a fever. In fact, the name bone set was derived from the plant's use in the treatment of breakbone fever. As we age, men get an inflamed prostate, while women develop what's called an overactive bladder. The name is different, but the result is the same. It starts with more and more frequent bathroom trips, some at 3 a.m. that will cost you a good night's sleep and leave you feeling dizzy the next day. Luckily, there is a very effective remedy for both. All you need are two extremely powerful plants found all over America. One will flush out and prevent any urine buildup, while the other will take care of the underlying inflammation which affects the muscles. But I must warn you, there is a side effect. Some people following this treatment experience a tremendous surge in their sex drive. On page 203, 
you'll find a gorgeous plant that regulates thyroid hormones, helping people with hypothyroidism increase their energy levels and lose weight. You will also find a plant that has a high concentration of chromium. Several studies have now demonstrated that chromium controls the metabolic action of insulin. One of them showed that a 10-month treatment with chromium in 833 patients with type 2 diabetes significantly reduced their fasting glucose levels beginning with the first month. Chromium is extremely rare nowadays because of the food processing methods that remove most of the naturally occurring chromium from foods. Maybe this is one of the reasons why type 2 diabetes is so common today, but a hundred years ago, it was a rarely occurring disease. While our grandparents consumed almost every part of this plant, today it has become invisible to most Americans. On page 61, you'll discover the plant commonly used as chicken feed that shrinks and heals varicose veins over time. Allergies are not to be taken lightly. It's a warning sign that your immune system is not acting the way it should. On page 169, you'll find a plant called Butterbur. This plant is so special because it contains antihistamines. So, you would reasonably assume that it has the same effect as antihistamines found in allergy medication, right? Wrong. When Butterbur was compared in a randomized controlled trial with Cetirizine, the active ingredient in Zyrtec, Although the results were the same, Butterbur didn't produce the sedative side effects associated with cetirizine. Same results, no money, fewer side effects. Basically, you're paying for the side effects. If you ever have to go out foraging, will you know which one of these plants is edible, which one is a remedy for high blood pressure and tension, and which one is poisonous? The Native Americans knew all too well, and probably our grandparents did too. But very few people nowadays could give the correct answer. As a survivalist, I can tell you that this kind of skill will set you apart from your group during dark times, and will probably turn you into their guide, or even their savior. I'm sure that you've seen this plant too. It grows in most forest glades. You'll discover how to use it effectively to treat not only common colds, but lung infections as well. Also, breathing in the steam from leaves that have been boiled in water will immediately calm any asthma attack. This is probably why, a hundred years ago, people with asthma didn't die from it. On page 200, you'll also discover a plant called Pipsisawa, which in Cree means to break up into small pieces. That's because of its ability to break up and dissolve painful kidney stones. This plant also contains a substance called hydroquinone, which disinfects the urinary system and heals inflammation of the bladder. If you've ever walked through the edges of a woodland and gotten some sticky burrs attached to your clothing, you can bet you've just passed by this plant. The best way to deal with this annoying weed? Eat it. Native Americans used it as a sweetener 200 years ago, and it tastes better than most greens I know. What people don't know is that this plant is also a strong diuretic you can take for poor blood circulation. If you've ever felt a tingling and numbness sensation in a limb in certain positions, you probably have bad circulation, and you should consider this blood vessel cleanser. People who use it can go from dizzy and tired most of the time to having an excess of energy in a few weeks. Another plant you'll find inside is called woolly lamb's ear also known as backyard bandage, this weed has been used for centuries on battlefields to stop bleeding. It's been recently discovered that it's high in vitamin K, the vitamin that coagulates the blood. It's the same powdered vitamin that we gave our soldiers in World War II to pour over the wound in case they were shot. I hope you never find yourself looking down at a wound that just won't stop bleeding. But if you do, or if a loved one has diabetes or problems with coagulation or wound healing, make sure you always have this plant on hand. A plant you want to keep close for a strong heart is called kudzu. This invasive weed has one very powerful property. It expands the arteries and vessels, lowering the blood pressure and unlocking blood flow. And in doing so, besides reducing the chances of clotting and strokes in people with myocardial ischemia, it helps treat a lot of medical problems like swollen feet or cold hands. No matter where you live in America, there's a source of water nearby. And when there's water, there are cattails. If you find cattails, you'll have everything you need for survival. Water, food, shelter, and fuel. You probably already know cattails are edible, but few people know what is probably the most important thing about them, the jelly-like substance that grows between its leaves. It is very good for severe skin infections and one of the best cures for nail and foot fungus. On a different note, this gel is the only part of the cattail that is widely considered to be inedible. It's not poisonous, so why? Well, because it has a powerful numbing effect on moist tissues and has been used as a Novocaine substitute in the past. Yes, it's an anesthetic that you can use in many, many situations. When the pioneers were hit with a ravaging toothache, they would just go and get their jar of cattail ooze and rub it around their gums. The pain would subside in minutes. 
Another thing you'll discover in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies is the ultimate survival tree that grows on almost every street in the U.S. I call it that because you can use the sap as medicine, its flowers as sleeping pills, its leaves as food, and the inner bark as cordage. You don't need much more than this to stay alive. Plus, you'll also find out about a tree you probably scraped yourself on as a child. According to a recent medical study, the flowers of this tree prevent the spreading of the prostate, breast, colon, and lung tumors, acting as a cytotoxic against cancerous cells. On page 57, you'll find a very special plant that can prevent five out of every six visits to the doctor. Maybe you heard a physician say that stress is the leading cause of cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. That's because stress doesn't let you sleep well. Deep sleep is the only time your body has to clear away dead cells and repair the damaged ones. If your inner doctor can't repair your cells properly, they'll start to mutate or change their normal behavior. This leads to so many unforeseen and dangerous consequences. You can cheat stress during the day, but at night, when you're all alone with your thoughts in your bed, it's very hard to escape it. But this plant helps you do exactly that. The sap of this plant is mildly narcotic. It is similar in the medical effect to the opium poppy, but it is much milder in its action and does not depress the central nervous system. It aids in treating sleep deprivation, anxiety, and nervous tension. Not only is this completely legal, but it is also a pretty common plant. I advise people to take it at bedtime as a simple infusion. Unlike sleeping pills, this plant is not addictive and doesn't have any known side effects. Usually, sleeping pills induce sleep by artificially lowering your heart rate, which can be very dangerous if you're a senior or have any circulation or cholesterol problems. Just remember, in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, you can also find healthy alternatives to almost every pill in your medicine cabinet. You'll also discover the plants that I use in my Leaky Gut Herbal Blend that form a protective layer around perforations in the gut through which toxic particles may enter your bloodstream. What you really don't want is anything that causes inflammation entering your bloodstream, as this leads to an inflammatory response that kicks autoimmune disorders into gear. The leaky gut blend not only heals the gut, but also decreases gut inflammation and helps balance your gut flora. Another plant you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies is St. John's Wort. It got that name from its uncanny ability to bloom exactly on June 24th, the birthday of St. John the Baptist. This plant has two major medical uses. The oil of St. John's Wort is a highly effective cure for hemorrhoids. It reduces inflammation and relieves pain. Use the recipe for St. John's Wort extracted oil and apply topically to the affected area. It's so simple. The tincture made from St. John's Wort is probably the most powerful natural antidepressant that you can make at home. Unlike synthetic drugs such as Prozac, Celexa, Zoloft, Xanax, or Paxil, St. John's Wort tincture has no side effects and it's not addictive. We all have our ups and downs, but sometimes staying too much in a slump can cause serious health problems. The main ingredient in St. John's Wort is hypericin, a substance that leads to increased dopamine levels by blocking an enzyme that would normally turn it into something else, depleting your levels of dopamine. In the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, you'll probably have items that you probably have in your cupboard right this second. Like the spice you add to your meals that can stop bleeding in just a matter of seconds. Or the substance that kills parasites in the digestive tract. Or the common household stain buster that can clear away most fungal and bacterial skin infections. This is just a tiny, small glimpse of what you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. Really, there's too much to say here. There are hundreds of remedies you'll find in this book. The index has literally 20 pages with just the diseases and the afflictions covered in this book. This is what 20 years of medical research and practicing natural medicine looks like. But there's more that you're going to get. If you get the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies today, you'll also take advantage of two exclusive gifts that will be off the table soon. First, you'll get the 80 square feet medicinal garden in your backyard. Wouldn't it be nice to walk out into your backyard and find the medicines you need growing right there? If you think about it, 80 square feet is a very small piece of land, just 12 by 6 feet. So no matter how small your backyard is, you can still grow your own natural remedies there. The second exclusive gift you'll get is called Disaster Medicine, a handbook for when help is not on the way. In a cataclysmic crisis, you can bet aid is not coming from anyone but yourself. In this bonus, you'll find the 20 most common infections and diseases that run rampant in most disasters. You'll learn how to diagnose them and how to treat them naturally using plants in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. In a crisis, these diseases account for more than 95% of medical fatalities. So if you choose to place the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies on your bookshelf, you'll also get these two exclusive bonuses that are worth $29 each for free and unlimited access to the members area and 24-7 support. With the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, you will also save money on healthcare. 
Just think how much you spend each year on drugs. The average American forks over about $800 every year on pills. I didn't want the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies to be anywhere near that. So today, you can get your own copy of the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies and the two bonuses for a one-time payment of just $37. The only way to get it is to click the Add to Cart button below now. Most of us are not used to facing medical emergencies. It seems like a distant possibility, and I surely hope so. But in the long run, there's no escape from it. Isn't it better to have this knowledge at your fingertips than not have it when you need it the most? This is the kind of book that even if you use it only once in your entire life, that one time may be all that matters. Treating yourself with chemicals and drugs will hurt your inner doctor, and it will also increase the risk of getting lots of other diseases, including cancer. Here is what is written on the patient information leaflet of the all-time best-selling drug in the USA. For children and adults taking TNF blockers, including Humira, the chance of getting lymphoma or other cancers may increase. There have been cases of unusual cancers in children, teenagers, and young adults using TNF blockers. Some people have developed a rare type of cancer called hepatosplenic T-cell lymphoma. This type of cancer often results in death. Not all pills have such frightening side effects. But in the long run, they all have the same side effect. They kill our capacity to heal ourselves. It's so easy just to pop pills these days without ever thinking what happens later. But now that you have an alternative, I say you don't have an excuse anymore. I printed the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies in a limited edition, so the only promise I can really make is that you'll get one if you order now. I really don't know if at this moment there are any more copies available. If you are still able to see the order button below this video, then it means I still have at least one copy left. Just scroll down, and if you see the button, click on it before they're all gone. You have a full 60 days to try the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. If at any time during those 60 days you are not completely satisfied with the results, send us an email and we'll give you back every cent. It's as simple as that. Also, if you use the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies to replace current drugs and don't end up saving at least $37, we'll send you a full refund, no questions asked. That's my personal guarantee to you. Think for yourself, act according to your own judgment, and learn to depend on yourself for you and your family. The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies is just a tiny but very important bit of knowledge we need to pass on to our children and grandchildren. The knowledge of plants will soon be lost forever if we don't do something about it. Thank you for watching. Many blessings and good health.